Hello everybody, this is Stringy Bear back to kick off the last 16 round. Ooh, not long to go till we crown a winner. Right, let's not dilly dally, let's have a look at who's fighting who in this session. So, at first we are going to see Kaijon Cooper going up against Silver Knights. Then we will see our tournament host, Stranger Gamer, going up against Benjamina. And then we'll be moving on down here, where we'll see MEJP10 taking a crack at Kaz. And we will finish up by seeing Tyrant King going up against Draga. So, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with our first matchup, shall we? Right then, in the red corner for Kaijon Cooper, we have got Penticeratops. Okay, good field for Kaijon Cooper. Droplocephalus does get terrain advantage here. That could be the difference. Um, I don't know who... I, I feel like this is going to be a very close match. Right, in the blue corner for Silver Knights, we have got a Uteraptor. A quarterfinal place is at stake for these two. Well, they're, they're, these two are already having their best tournaments, so... <laughs> well, in terms of my tournaments, anyway, these, this is the best that both of these guys have done. But can they go that one step further and get to the quarters? Right, that's a tie. Ooh, Pentaceratops strikes first. A galley rush coming in. A, a Thunder Bazooka activating. Silver Knights on the back foot. Okay, Dino Illusion does get triggered though. But it's a good start from Kaijon Cooper. Okay, that's a tie. We'll need quite a few of those ties to avoid the Dino Illusion. And well, they won't avoid the Dino Illusion, you'll get the hit. And that will get rid of the Dino Illusion. But this is a good start from Kaijon. And that is Curtains for Uteraptor. And just like that, Kaijon Cooper racing into an early leap. Oh no, Slippy Chlap. Right then, coming in next for Silver Knights, we got, well, Pentaceratops. Gonna fight the uh, Penty with Penty. But it has been all Kaijon Cooper in this map so far. Silver Knights yet to get a hit. Another hit. This is it's all Kaijon Cooper at the minute. Silver Knight's really struggling to get going. They need to get. They need to start getting something going. Otherwise, they're going down with a whimp. Oh, it's another hit. Well, it... card Silver Knight's get a hit on the board, man. Okay, please give him a crit. Ah, there we go. Thank you, random number generator. And that is Silver Knights' first shot of the match. And it is a crit, so it is quite a big one. But they needed this. Can they build on it? Okay, there's another hit. That's going to max up the elemental power. That should... Oh, it's not going to be enough to take up the uh, Pentaceratops. But this is, this is better from Silver Knights. And that tile do it. Well, the Pentaceratops will still go down because Euoplocephalus has terrain advantage. Right, coming in next for Kaijon Cooper, we've got Euoplocephalus. It's got terrain advantage. It's going to get the next hit. It's going to be a scissors hit. And it's going to be a mole attack, by the looks of it. Well, it has type advantage anyway, but I think the elemental power might even that out. But yeah, I'm pretty confident in saying this will be lethal damage. I'd be amazed if the Pentaceratops survived this. Yeah, I didn't think it would. <laughs> right then, coming in food for Silver Knights, we have got Spiny Dino Tector. 
Well, we can't count Silver Knights out yet. This, we've seen it before. Dino Tectors can turn matches 180. And if he, if he does get past the Octocephalus relatively quickly, this thing does have tight advantage over that Torvosaurus. And remember, we've seen it before in this tournament. I think it was Aaron plays Spinotector. It caused Kaijon all sorts of problems. I think that match ended in a draw. But Spinotector was a reason that match ended in all square. Oh, poo, I forgot to hit the button on 7, damn it. <laughs> but he gets the hit anyway. Two. There we go. Haha, <laughs> yes, this spiny is what he's 7 touch, so I'm going to try and hit the button on 7. Which is something I'm defi indefinitely going to do in the future. But that's a massive crit from the spiny. Oh, look at that. Huge shot. And well, just like that, all of a sudden, Kaijon's lead is gone. The Uoplocephalus is gone. Well, it's definitely going down after that shockwave. Right, so Spiny will be going for Paper. And as for Kaijon, well, they're going to get hit. It's an Alpha Dice. And just like that, Silver Knight's leveling the score. <laughs> of course they get a 6. <laughs> Of course, there's a six right when they don't need it. But what's more worrying for Kaijon, that Dino Tector bar is almost full. Right, coming in third for Kaijon Cooper. We've got Super Torvosaurus, Awaken Mode on three. It's got tight disadvantage against Spiny. So you'd have to say, for the first time in this match, momentum is with Silver Knights. One Ultimate Water ends this match. Can Kaijon Cooper at least survive to, to get a chance at an awakened hit? That's not good. A Futaba Cannon, a possible shockwave to come as well. This is really not good. Oh, look at that. There's the shockwave. It's the momentum of this match has done a 180 and is well in Silver Knights' favour now and it is Dino Tech time. And well, Kaijon is now, well, well, they were well on top early on in this match but now they're on the brink of the exit. Spiny Tech to causing him all sorts of problems yet again. And well, the shockwave rule. Right, scissors. Can they get a scissors? Oh, he can't! It's an ultimate water! And it's an ultimate beat in. And, oh, there's a lag. And Kaijon Cooper is gone. Silver Knights comes from behind to get the win and go through to the quarterfinals. And yet again, Spiny Tector being the nemesis of Kaijon Cooper. Well, that was an entertaining match, wasn't it? Right, here we go. On to my match now. <laughs> well, here we go again. Okay, in the red corner, for our host Stranger Gamer, we got Sinteosaurus, and why is the lava green? That's odd. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is the volcano field, so Benjamina does get terrain advantage, courtesy of the Kakirodontosaurus in third. That could be key for them yet. Right, in the blue corner for Benjamina, we got Super Carnotaurus, Awaken Mode on two. Now, they do get type advantage in this matchup, so this is... Given they're on this field as well, this is probably a very good matchup for them. And well, every time I've written them off in matches, they've won. So I'm going to say that I'm not going to write them off this time. And I'm going to say that they're going to win comfortably. Aha, reverse psychology. <laughs> right, let's see what happens. Ooh, good start from the host. Getting the first shot on the board. Badoosh. Now, I do have the elemental power to counter the type advantage that he has. And I do know that Carnotaurus is all about the crit. Oh, that's going to max up the elemental power. The defense boost is going to activate. This is good from Sinteosaurus. <laughs> Let's see how hard your Carnotaurus hits now. Well, again... One awakened crit, and that Centaurosaurus is dead. Uh-oh. Oh, that's alright. Okay, it's a tie, though. It's a tie, so I do 
Synthosaurus does take a fair bit of damage. Okay, this scissors. Another tie. But Benjamin, I won't mind that. And they do get the hit. A Lillian Cure. But yeah, n very little damage done, given that's an awakened hit as well. The defense boost really help it. But hang on a minute, it's a Jet Shuriken. Really? This freaking happened in my match against Storm, where the Synthosaurus was maxed up. It was li a literal health tank. And then the other guy gets a death fire off and one shots me. Absurd. Anyway, coming in next for our host stream the game where we got Mega Raptor. Well, somehow we're losing this match, even though he's only got one hit. <laughs> and it wasn't even a good one. But, you know, it's all about the big hits. Well, again, it wasn't even a big hit. It was just a freaking Lily, two ties and a freaking Lily Angular. Okay, the Meg does get the next hit on the board. What well, our hosts can't afford to let happen is that Carnotaurus to get off a cheap crept. Okay, and it won't. Well, you have to say, it's been an even start so far, but our hosts have definitely got more hits in this match. But that awakened hit keeps Benjamina in the lead. Right, coming in next for Benjamina, we've got Ceratosaurus, Super Ceratosaurus, Awaken Mode on 2. Hmm. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's a tie. Getting quite a few ties in this match. Oh, Mega Raptor getting another hit on the board. Well, we are getting hits in this match, but there's not if I ain't stopping getting an awakened hit, that would that would be the difference. Oh, and there's another hit, another tie bomb coming in, but the Ceratosaurus is about to be awakened. Oh, damn it, I wanted a cyclone here. So this is going well, but one awakened hit and Benjamin are be back in front. Oh, but they don't get it this time. This time the Mega Raptor's ready for it. No awakened hit from Benjamin this time. And a cyclone as well. And, and it finally looks like our host is building on the momentum they got. Oh, the random number generator is having a five minutes. Okay, it's a two. And a five, so that's going to be a tie. Which, oh, well, the cyclone activates anyway, so the Sarasaurus goes down. Right then, coming in third for Benjamino, we got Kakirodontosaurus, we dare not count them out yet, this cut does have type advantage, it's got terrain advantage, it's gonna get the next hit in this match. And remember, Benjamino was in this situation against Sunlight Rabbit, they came back to win. So we won't dare not count them out yet. And I have to say, this has probably been the most impressive Kark in the tournament. So I am very, still very weary. Okay, no Volcano Burst, though. Oh, there's another hit. Is Benjamin are going to do it again? This freaking car has been MVP for them. Gotta give it. And there's a hit. That's down the Mega Raptor. Uh, I would have liked a hit on him, but oh well. <laughs> right, coming in third for our host, we have got a Rhinoceratops. Come on, buddy. This is your time to shine. <laughs> You've been utterly useless this entire tournament, but he needs to perform here. Well, here we go. It's all on this. Okay, there's a crit. That's a good shot from the host. Attack boost's gonna activate. Hopefully we'll see electric charge as well. Please? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> but I don't mind, I'll take that. At this point, I'll take any hit. Oh, that's a tie. Oh, Benjamin, I guess the next shot. A light recovery's going to come. That's going to even things out again. 
A volcano burst, perhaps? No. Five. Oh, that's another hit. Benjamina taking the lead. But the counter blitz has been activated. That guarantees our host the next hit of some kind. Okay, well, I get the hit anyway. The attack boost is going to activate. Hopefully, electric charge will activate. And, we, and it does. Oh, this is going right down to the wire. Look at this. This is neck and neck. It's just who's got more gas in the tank. Oh, that's a tie. Come on, Rider Ceratops. You can do it. And it's Stranger Gamer getting the hit. The hosts are going through. A Rider Ceratops does something useful for the first time this entire tournament. And takes out Benjamina to advance to the quarterfinals. But I have to say, Benjamina put up a really good fight. That even though he wasn't getting many hits early on in the match, I definitely got way more hits than he did. He hung in there. And that cock was causing all sorts of problems, but the Arhinoceratops, when it matters most, it delivered. Right then. That was fun, wasn't it? On to our third match. Okie dokie. Ooh, this is a good field for Kaz. The death terrain advantage. Right, in the red corner for MEJP10, we've got Ulti Rhinos. Well, MEJP10, 8 out of 8 so far. Looking to make it 9 out of 9. That'll be extraordinary. But, in the blue corner, representing Kaz, we have got the Joe Boria. Kaz also enjoying a good tournament here. Well, especially for their debut, will they be the first debut to book a place in the quarterfinals? Well, either way, we're going to see a newcomer in the quarters because Tyrant King and Varga play each other after this match. So one of them will get through. <laughs> see what happens. Well, <laughs> what a start from MEJP10. It's a metal wing. We've seen this before. And it's another early crit. Now, don't discount your Boreas crit, though, because we all know how hard that Hydro Cutter can hit. We all know how hard it can hit. Okay, that's a good hit from Joe Boria going for that scissors, but it is a danger to go for that crit. It does leave the Joe Boria vulnerable to a Metal Wing. Oh, there's another Metal Wing, a light recovery just like that. Joe Boria's gone. And MEJP10 yet again establishing an early lead. Well, I don't know why. I get the feeling this could be their tournament. <laughs> well, they say that. Black Beauty's also 100% as well. But since they're both on opposite sides of the draw, they won't meet till the final. Right, anyway, coming in next for Kaz, we got Berezinosaurus. Oh, well, not the ideal start for Kaz in this match. Going down super early to those two Metal Wings. Okay, there's a hit on the board. Uh, uh, elemental Power going to activate. That'll definitely limit the damage done by Metal Wing. Oh, and there's a crit. This is better from Kaz. Starting to get some hits back in this match. Elemental power maxing up as well. Okay, that's a tie. And there goes Ulti Rhinus. This is a good, good response from Kaz after going down early. Right then, coming in next for MEJP10, we have got the Euoplocephalus. Well, this Euoplocephalus really has performed in the last couple of matches. And do take into account, Kaz does get terrain advantage in this match because they have Alpha Chasmosaurus waiting in third. Is it tight? But they have done very well to close this gap on MEJE10. But MEJE10 does get the next hit on the board. And they do get off an elemental power of their own. 
Okay, claw blade has been triggered. That will help. That will definitely help. Because that's a crit. Now, this will be interesting because that fairy is buffed up with elemental power. And its secret move has been triggered. So I don't think this is going to do as much damage. But the Uoplo... Oh, he freaking killed it! Oh, well, never mind that. He killed it! Oh, wasn't expecting that. And now, all of a sudden, Kaz could be in big trouble now. Because coming in third is Alpha Kazmosaurus. Yes, it does get the next hit because of the terrain advantage. Yes, it's going to be a crit. But... With the elemental power buff maxed up on the Uoplocephalus now, and the type advantage it has, that's going to be a huge problem for Kaz. So this will be very interesting to see how much damage this lightning spear actually does. <clears throat> Oh wow, that was a crit as well. Really not good for a Kaz. I mean, it's a hit, but... Yeah, again, look at that, an electric... They need an electric charge, really. And how many of those hits are you going to get before any gets a next a hit like that? And look at that, look at the difference. That's the type advantage for you. The Earth Barrier is coming in as well. MEJP10 has really turned the screw on this match. And I'd have to say he's well on top. Okay, a rock hit is really what Kaz needs. Okay, that gets rid of the Earth Barrier. An electric charge, that's very welcome. That's going to definitely help. As will the Rock Rock buff if Kaz gets this next hit. And they do. This could be a big hit from Kaz. And look at that, he killed it! Massive hit from Kaz. Could that be a turning point? Right, coming in third for MEGP10 with the Torvosaurus. Well, to be honest, I didn't think they'd get the Torvosaurus. <laughs> Given how stacked that Uoplocephalus was. But, Kaz got that perfect shot there to take out the Uoplocephalus. Could that be a turning point? Oh, good, it's a tie. <laughs> yes, I know I click scissors instead of paper. <laughs> but thankfully, it was a tie. And this time, it is a tie with scissors. And that's a third tie. The ties are wearing down the Chasmosaurus, which is not good for Kaz. And that's not good either, but it's a Dino Stuffer. The Dino Stuffer is going to stop that crit and keep Kaz alive in this tournament. How massive could that be? Oh, and Kaz does get the next hit on the board. Will we see another electric charge? We do. This is going right down to the wire. And this is probably the closest MEJP10 has come. All tournament to lose him. Is Kaz going to break their winning streak? Yes, they are. Kaz has done it. And MEJP10 is going out. The winning streak ends at 8. And it is Kaz going through to the quarter-final round. And what a win for Kaz. You know, the Dino Stuffer kept them alive. That big hit with the Paper Paper buff on the Uoplocephalus kept them alive. Two massive moments in this match that swung it in Kaz's favour. And MEJP10, they've had a memorable tournament. It's been a brilliant winning streak, but they are bowing out. And not to mention, terrain advantage as well. Not that that made much of a difference, but it is a difference. Well, that was a really good match. Right, on to our fourth and final match of this session. Right then, in the red corner for Tyrant King, we have got a, a black T-Rex. Um, okay, there's no win types in this matchup, so there'll be no terrain advantages. Tyrant King is all about those big, big hits. Those earth-shaking shots. And will they be able to land some on Varga? Right, in the blue corner for Varga, we have got Torvosaurus. Varga having a really good tournament. In really red-hot form at the minute. Five wins on in a row coming into this match. They're in red-hot form. And I'd probably say, especially with MEJP10 now out, I'd say the form team in this tournament, alongside Black Beauty, look 
really strong, but this will be a big test for them because Tyrant King hits really hard. I'd probably say they are now the hardest hitting team left in this tournament in terms of sheer force. So Varga definitely has to be careful. And this is not a good start for Varga. That Black T-Rex getting big hits early on. Hits like an absolute truck. Okay, but the Torvosaurus landing its first shot of the match. The tech boost going to activate as well. We might see Volcano Burst, and we do. Good response from Varga. Five. That's another crit, just like that. Varga coming back into this, maxing up the technique boost. And a Volcano Burst here. Oh, there's no Volcano Burst. That does leave the door open for the Death Fire to be triggered. And the Death Fire to be activated. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because one hit from the Black T-Rex would have taken out Torvosaurus, but it's cool to see it get off a Death Fire. More for the style points. <laughs> oh, no. Unfortunately, yeah. Unlucky there from Varga, because they could have easily got off a Volcano Burst. You know, and that doesn't happen, but... I suppose then the EO car comes in and we're level packing anyway, but... Instead, it is Tyrant King in the lead. Could that missed Volcano Burst come back to haunt Varga come the end game? Anyway, coming in next for Varga, we got Joboria, we all know it. We all love it. But Dino Stuffer could come in very handy here. Along with the type advantage that the Joboria has. Oh, that's not good though. That's actually really bad for T Varga because that curry and rice is going to heal up the Black T-Rex. Quite a bit, actually. Which is going to give it another chance, possibly, at getting the Death Fire. Which is really bad for Varga. Ty. Oh, and it gets off a Magma Blaster! That volcano, that missed volcano burst is proving really costly at the minute. The Joboria just can't land a shot. Okay, there's a shot, and that should be lethal. And it bloody well is. But that black T Rex definitely did some damage. Right, coming in next for Tyrant King, we've got Super Eel Carcaria, Wake Mode on 3. <laughs> I will say, for Kaz, from Kaz's perspective, whoever they get, I think they will fancy themselves because of the Joboria in third. Whether it's Tyrant King with his massive hidden dinos, or Varga with his more uh, technical dinos. I don't really know what to say. I think Kaz will fancy himself, but at the minute it looks like it's going to be Tyrant King, but it's still a long week to go yet. And coming in third for Virga, we got Armatus. Now it's got the spectral armor. Varga can easily come back into this match. We saw in the first match, the Dino Tector made a huge difference. And, and I believe spectral armors hit harder as well. There's a tie. Oh, but what Varga can't afford to let happen is this eel cock to get hit. Okay, that's a, I think that's one. Yeah, that's one. Just trying to remember. Okay, there's a crit. That's a very welcome crit, and the tap boost's going to activate as well. Poison it as well. I'll come in handy. Okay, yes, yeah. That's twice, I believe. Oh, and that's another attack boost. It's going to be awakening time for the Eel Carcaria. Well, one hit here ends this match. Can Varga survive? I think he can.
And yes, he can. The tide did do some damage to Armatus, but the Eocar carrier goes down, which is the crucial bit. Right, coming in third for Tyrant King, we've got Ankylosaurus. Can Tyrant King finish the job here? One hit from the Armatus, and we will see Spectral Armor. And then all of a sudden, Varga with a chance to win this. And there is that hit, a Quake Saber. Varga really coming back into this. Armatus doing a very good job. <clears throat> and look at this all of a sudden. And with the spectral armor. It's in Varga's hands now. Well, here we go. It's all on this. But one guy amounting from Tyrant King can win it for him. But momentum certainly with Varga at the minute. All down to this. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, that's a tie. Don't think either of our guys have Sand Trap. And it's Armatus getting the hit. Burger will do it and go through to the quarterfinals. And it will be six in a row for Burger. And Tyrant King will bow out at the last 16 round. Boosh. Well, that uh, missed volcano burst not proving costly in the end there for Varga. <laughs> right, that's going to conclude the matches. So I'll have a look at our two quarterfinal matchups and we'll end the session. Well, that's our quarterfinal lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Well, two of the matches anyway. So it's going to be Silver Knights taking on our host, Stranger Gamer. And down here, it is going to be Kaz going up against Varga which is going to be a really exciting match because since both of these two are newcomers in this tournament so one of them is going to get to the semi-final and what a run both of them have been on particularly Varga and well we could actually have a rematch but we'll see what happens we got uh, this side of the bracket to do first and we will do that in part two so until then ta-ta mm -hmm.